What's happening, Wargamers? Welcome to another episode of The Dossier, the Marvel Crisis Protocol show, where we take a look at the characters for Marvel Crisis Protocol, share our thoughts on the character design itself for the model, uh, the character card, and then any sort of relevant tactics cards that uh, might be affiliated with them. Uh, and of course, uh, we then sort of share some thoughts on where uh, where we think their role in the game is. And uh, for this particular episode, we are going through the recent the recent glow ups that we had from Mini Stravaganza, and today is going to be uh, the one Marvel girl herself, Jean Grey, with the alter ego Jean Grey. And this one's kind of an exciting one because she was uh, she was always kind of a difficult model to uh, to place early on, and uh, her glow up has definitely made it a lot easier to do stuff here with her. So let me just get this to focus here. So as you can see, the model, oh, sorry about that. So as you can see, the model itself has a really sort of classic Jean Grey pose. She's uh, sort of like uh, lifting herself up into the air. She has the psionic blades to kind of keep her aloft, hand down stressed, uh, outstretched uh, other hand on the forehead. So she's like focusing in on there. Uh, very easy model to assemble. Great model, actually. I'm, I'm actually a big fan of uh, the Jean Grey model. Uh, it was just really unfortunate that for so long she was just really not that usable. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the model itself, like, so she was fairly easy to assemble, but the little psionic blades, those were the really tricky things to get them to sort of sit properly on the legs and uh, have her balanced on them and have them stay properly apart and everything like that. That was a bit of a pain, but otherwise, once that was figured out, the rest of it came together uh, really kind of easily. And uh, so we got this, we got this, you know, fairly, fairly good uh, pose for Jean Grey. And yeah, not not really a whole lot to say on. I don't think it's uh, I don't think the model is blowing any any contests away, but I think it definitely fits with uh, with what you sort of envision with uh, Jean Grey when she's uh, interacting with the game. So what do we have for her card here? So for her card, we got uh, you know Jean Grey three, four, five for her defenses, six uh, stamina, five threat, size two, medium move. She is very beefy with uh, six stamina on her healthy side, seven on her injured side for a combined 13 stamina for a side, uh, for a five threat. Uh, that That's a lot of stamina to get through. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, so, you know, it, it's solid. It's solid, especially uh, if you're able to take advantage of her mystic defense. She's got a psionic bolt builder attack, range four, five dice, mystic attack. It has a wild sap power for each wild uh rolled you get to take one power away and uh, gain one power from the enemy character and then it's got a skull pierce so this is actually a new one from the uh the the redone cards uh i'm always kind of hesitant to say whether or not i like the skull triggers on this one because i feel like you're losing some damage going through but you are gaining something with a pierce as well it does kind of reward you for rolling that failure so it's not all bad uh and it's less it's less of sort of like a, a win more if you're already rolling the character with it with an attack getting that pierce in there yeah it's it's good for you but at the same time you know it, it means you're not doing that extra point of damage instead, instead of getting two points of damage for for a pierce yeah you're just getting one in this case but still i mean it's it's nice to see on a range four or five dice attack uh anytime pierce is there it's always kind of good to see we got telekinetic force it's a physical attack range three nine dice for five power now, if I recall correctly, I believe this one went down in cost. I think it used to cost six power, maybe even more, but it went down in cost. It has a size four character throw. I can throw it short before damage is dealt. And then it's got a wild explosive, which is also before damage is dealt. Other characters within two of the target characters suffer one damage. Now you can stack these two in whatever way you want. So if there's more characters around before the throw, you know, definitely hit that explosive. Then if you can get more characters after the throw, definitely hit it then. The really nice thing about this is that it was always very restrictive to use with her previous iteration, but now she actually has tools to get that telekinetic force out there more often and actually have an impact of the game. Because nine dice physical is nothing to be scoffed at. She's got battlefield manipulation, which is an active superpower for three. She can choose a terrain feature size four or less within range three and throw a medium. Once again, size four terrain throw within range three medium is always excellent. She can really play around with the battlefield, get some of those big pieces of terrain out of there, and uh, you know never discount both uh, the medium range and the size or the range three uh, for actually picking up and tossing things around. She's got matter transmutation, another active ability for three power. Choose another character with an activated token within two and push it short. 
Uh, character can only be moved by the superpower once per turn. Note that this does not say allied or enemy character with an activated token. It is just another character with an activated token. This is a great way of rearranging the board. Uh, you can uh, move enemy characters around uh, that have activated if you need to get them closer or get them off a point. Or if you have a character that is in danger close area that's already uh, moved and done something, you can pull them back. Uh, it's actually really nice to do a very aggressive early uh, early grab of an extract and then activate Gene and, and just kind of pull them back into the relative safety of the rest of your team. I really like it. Uh, we got Shield Mind up next, which is a reactive ability for two power. When this character or an allied character within four of it would be advanced, placed, or pushed by the effects of an enemy psychic or mystic attack or superpower, uh, use this power. The allied character is not advanced, placed, or pushed. You're keeping your own guys staying on the point. This is excellent. Two power, not too much to pay for that at all. Awesome. Then we have latent psychic potential. During the power phase, this character gains two additional power, and this is huge. Massive. The fact that right on, every round... She's going to have three power unless, of course, she's like poisoned or stunned or something like that, which means she has almost every part of her kit online right off the hop. And that is that's just so good. It means, you know, you can you can get that uh, turn one matter transmutation or you can get that turn one throw. It is just so good. I that power generation was her big thing. She has always been a very power hungry character. Now she actually has the ability to do something with with all her kit and actually make use of it. Uh, and then of course she has a flight on top of that because we always we always see her flying around. Now the card I want to talk about in this particular case is uh, Mental Domination, and uh, this has always been a really interesting card. And I think with Gene it's now gotten actually a lot better. So you'll notice right at the top it, it's a physical attack of range two two power. But what it is it's unaffiliated active. And during an activation of either Cassandra Nova or Jean Grey, they can spend three power to play this card. So right off the hop, you know that they have the power to play this. You choose an enemy character within range three, so six inches. Advance that chosen character short. The character that played this card makes the above attack. So that's the one we just noticed. The caveat, though, when measuring range and line of sight for this attack, you measure from the chosen character, not the attacking character. And you add dice to the attack roll equal to the physical defense of the chosen character. And your opponent cannot reroll any number of opposing defense dice uh, in the roll. This is a disturbingly fun card. You'll notice it does not take an action. Uh, it, is not, uh, it does not replace one of her existing attacks. So she could theoretically psionic bolt twice and then do like a mental domination. And uh, it's, it's well within what they can do. If you have a bigger, beefier character with four physical defense... This is something that, you know, they're walking around and now dealing, you know, a six dice attack. If And it's just, it is so nice. Uh, and now because uh, because it is still Gene making the attack, if she happens to have hammers, you add to that. So make a note, if the if the target character does not have hammers, you don't add the extra dice to it. But if she does, uh, she will. And this is a great way of just getting sort of like a surprise attack. Not only are you displacing somebody, but you're getting attack in, uh, an attack in with it which, I mean, could potentially take out a, a lower threat character or someone who's already closely wounded. Um, so yeah, that is Jean Grey. She has gotten a big glow up uh, with uh, the, new, uh, the new cards. And as a result, she is just so much better to see on the table. I'm trying to get this to focus here. I'm sorry. Uh, there we go. And uh, yeah, so I think she actually works really well in Cyclops' new X-Men Blue leadership where you're, you're throwing power around a little bit more. Uh, although anything where you can give her a little bit more power is excellent because the more times you can use her kit, the better. Uh, she really likes getting a whole bunch of her uh, her kit off, and she's got some really potent abilities to take advantage of that one. Um, so yeah, like the, the typical typical things, um, uh, Avengers, obviously, A-Force I think is a solid one for her. Inhumans, really nice. I played her in Convocation the other day. She actually uh, complimented it really nicely. And of course, X-Men Blue, really great for that. Uh, I just love the fact that Jean Grey now actually is a uh, part of the conversation, and I think everyone should give her a try. Leave your comments below, get involved in the conversation, and of course, we will see you next time. Happy Wargaming.